Jack Reacher, past deceased, retired army. Bronze star, silver star, and a purple heart. What in God's name is a guy like that doing in Margrave? What's a guy like that doing in jail? Zip ties? Cuffs didn't fit him. You guys recycle. Now don't go getting yourself arrested for murder. 24 books. Uh, you read them all. You know, what, were, what was the trait, what was the thing that stood out to you and made you, Alan, fall in love with Jack Reacher? You know, I think so. I, I, I only knew of the uh, of the book sort of what I'd, I'd you know just picked out of the zeitgeist, and, and and all I'd ever really heard was the action side of things. So I expected it to to be the sort of action thriller, and uh, I was really surprised at how well rounded this world was, um, how well rounded the characters are, um, and how funny Reacher is. I I would laugh out loud every book, and you know I d I didn't realize there was like this levity, the sense of humor to it. Um, and uh, I, I love that. So, you know, one of the first things I said when I when I came on board was I, I, I really want to make sure that this show has a sense of humor. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And um, uh, fortunately, I didn't have to I didn't have to fight anybody over that. Everybody's on the same page. Nick Santora, the showrunner writer who's adapted this so brilliantly. Um, he was always one step ahead of me in that way. He he knew exactly what to do. And um, he he teed us up for a fun show. Our Reacher was played on screen by Tom Cruise in two movies. I thought he was awesome as well. Uh, but how did you want to make your version stand apart, be different, put your own fingerprints on it? Yeah, I mean, I think if, uh, to me, I think I'm doing my job if you don't see my fingerprints on it. I want people to get lost in uh, in this journey. Um, if if people start to see like, oh, those are Alan's mannerisms or his, uh, you know, his little, or his personality peeking through, um, you know, I, I think I've, I've, you know, I've missed an opportunity there. Um, so, I, you know, I, I really poured myself into the work that Lee, Lee uh, set the stage with and the 24 books and all the short stories and, uh, you know, even Reacher's Rules. I mean, I've read it all, um, uh, some more than once. And, uh, uh, and I dove into the scripts, um, you know, to the point where I memorized the entire script and every, not just my lines. And, I, you know, I think that gave me the ability to, like, really listen when I was on set and uh and just be immersed in the world that we were in um uh which i think the fans deserve you know um uh to to, to think like reacher i think you just have have to be um out of the way of uh you know yeah, out of my own way and and uh, just be just be immersed in that world so that's that's where I, I put my energy but how would you describe reacher to someone i mean he's this big imposing guy uh you don't know if he's gonna hit you or hug you uh, kind of thing. Uh, how would you describe Reacher to someone who's never read the books before? Yeah, Re Reacher is somebody, you know, just for a little background, he's a former military police officer. He was in the uh, 110 Special Investigations Unit of the Army. So he was tasked with, uh, he was essentially the, the Sherlock Holmes for the military. He would track down AWOLs and he had a very special set of skills and capabilities. It made him very dangerous. If, you know, if, if you're talking about the civilian world, that's somebody with, uh, you know that that should be feared um but he you know he's uh he wants to see the world on his own terms he's a he's a hobo he's a wanderer he he walks around with nothing he has a toothbrush and a passport in his pocket and a little bit of change and that's it um and uh you know but but i i, I share in this you know if i see something happening um i don't care how dangerous it is i i have an insatiable need to uh, to see justice done and uh, protect the innocent, and Reacher's no different, you know. And so he gets wrapped up in some uh, some mysteries. But I think one of the things that's fun about it is um, he lives by his own set of rules, and he's somebody who blurs the line between good and bad. He's a protagonist that confuses us a little bit because he will cheat to win if that's what it takes. But um, you know, we love him for it because uh, what he wants to win is uh, uh, the game of fairness uh, or justice. Uh, this adapts the first book, uh, The Killing Floor. Uh, Alan, what books would you like to see adapted in future seasons? Uh, there are many. My list is long. I have a list. Um, but, you know, uh, Die Trying to me was a fantastic read. And I think um, it being so early in the series, just, ca you know, it captured so perfectly the essence of the best of the Reacher world. And I just I would love to see that one come to life someday. OK, I got to ask you, man, you're huge in the show. Uh, you know, it's snowing out here in Toronto. Uh, what do you what do you do to motivate yourself on those days that you don't want to hit the gym? You don't want to exercise. What's your 
go-to motivational tip. You know, it's funny you bring up Toronto. Yeah, I've, I've been in I've been in Toronto for years. I mean, I think everything shoots in Toronto now. The cold, icy, uh, blustery days there, I would run in the snow. Um, there's no way that you can stay still or or, or slack off when it's uh, you know 20 below and. Uh, uh, it motivates you to keep moving and moving fast. So uh, I loved running in the snow up there and training um, in, uh, in uh, the cold weather. But, um, you know, during the pandemic, everything was shut down. So I, uh, you know, life sort of pushed me towards building a gym in my, in my, in my house, the, you know, the house that I was staying in. And, uh, you know, the dining room became a, a home gym. And it's hard, to, it's hard to miss a day when you've got it staring you in the face. Uh, reach your crushes, a big plate of ribs in one of the episodes yes give me the reach your cheat cheat meal well i mean you just have to look at my own diet uh, i eat everything that's in front of me like i'm like a hoover vacuum for food it's uh it's disgusting really um uh, i could play i could be, if there's ever a sequel to seven i could be the guy that dies eating spaghetti and it would be basically a documentary of my life um I love food, as does Reacher. It was my idea to pile on. They actually had the audacity to ask me, the food designer, there's an actual job, they're a food designer. That's their job is to put food on a plate. Uh, which food on this menu would you like to eat in this scene? And I said, which? All of it. And they're like, but that's a lot of food. I'm like, put it all on the plate and I'm going to eat all of it. And I did. And I think you're talking about the same scene. There was 15 things on that plate and I almost choked to death trying to deliver lines and eat that at the same time, but it was worth it. Looking for payback? Payback, justice, vengeance. Yeah, Looking for the whole gang. You're gonna kill a whole lot of people, aren't you? Already started. <laughs>